In the last video, we talked about the gold nationalization that happened in 1933. Some people mistakenly call that the gold confiscation. Could we dig a little bit deeper this time into the gold nationalization and how that, what lessons we learned from then that might apply to today? Yeah, uh, once again, uh, just to sort of repeat, uh, when somebody confiscates something, they don't reimburse you. They, they take it from you. That's the definition yeah. of confiscation. Right? Exactly. Right. And that, that isn't what happened in 1933. You got reimbursed at full value. Right. The government bought it from you. Uh, they made it illegal for you to own. And then they took it and they put it all in one place owned by the government. So it was nationalized. That's the, the definition of nationalization. The government, it's transferred from your ownership to the government's. So it was a nationalization, not a confiscation. Once again, if somebody says that, don't deal with them because they're trying to move you into a higher profit margin item instead of the item that you want. Uh, one of the things I left out of the last video, uh, I, I told everybody uh, the scenario in which they would nationalize, nationalize or could, but I didn't tell them why it can't happen now. And it cannot happen. It's just not going to happen if the economy is running smoothly. And here's why. 70% of all of the currency on the planet is U.S. dollars. 70%. More than half of those dollars reside outside the United States. So if 70% is dollars, that means 30% is all the other currencies in the world. If more than half of the 70%, that means more than 35% is U.S. dollars. That means that more than half of all the currency outside of the United States is, is U.S. dollars also. So um, let's say you are a uh, foreign, you're, you're a brokerage house, uh, a, a bank, uh, you're somebody in finance anywhere in the world except the United States. And today Obama says we're going to make private ownership of gold illegal in the United States and all American citizens have to turn over their gold. We're going to buy it from you. What would you do? If I was a, a banker or a brokerage house or you know investment banker outside of the United States, I'd go, oh my God, there's something wrong with the dollar. I better sell my dollars and buy gold. And I, I, this is exactly what would happen. I mean, I can't think of any other scenario that would happen. And what would happen then is the value of the dollar would plummet and gold would take off to the moon because it's measured in dollars. And the government would get exactly 180 degrees uh, opposed to the, res the result that they're trying to get by nationalizing gold. It's just, and they know this, it's just not going to happen under normal circumstances. The only possible way it would happen is if it's threatening the survival of the dollar. And this does happen toward the end of a hyperinflation, when prices are changing so rapidly that people recognize that if they sell their home or their used car or whatever and they hold on to those dollars for even a week, uh, they're going to lose massive amounts of purchasing power. At that point, they do start asking for gold and silver. And this is what has happened throughout history. Uh, the big thing to realize here, though, is that if we're in a hyperinflation and we get to the point where the government's going to nationalize it, it means that 99% of the, or 95%, whatever, of the wealth transfer, the, the gains that you're making in purchasing power, is over with. You've if, already, right, go ahead. Yeah, you've already made those gains. Right. It's the signal to go ahead and sell them, sell it to them and take their stupid currency and buy something else like a house or, or stocks or whatever. If that was to happen, are we anywhere, you know, that's what you're saying, if that was to happen, yeah. are we anywhere near that now? Is now the time to get out of precious metals and get back into real estate and stocks? No, we're maybe, uh, if we had a normal greed-driven bull market uh, like the one in the 70s, we're probably only 20% the way there. <laughs> If, if we had a hyperinflation, the, the transfer in, of purchase, you know, 20% from the bottom in 2001 when this bull market started, we're probably 20% of the wealth transfer from people that hold currency to the people that hold precious metals has already happened. 80% is left to get, most likely. But uh, if a hyperinflation were to happen, we're maybe 2% the way there. I mean, it's, it's nothing. In a hyperinflation, the wealth transfer will be stunning. It will, will be just uh, breathtaking. You don't want it to happen. It's, it, I mean, you will be, the holders of precious metals will be very, very wealthy, but everybody else will be so poor and there will be no middle class left. It will be a different society. Hyperinflations also lead to the rise of dictators. You don't want to see a hyperinflation happen. The scary part is that <laughs> uh, 
with what Ben Bernanke is doing to the currency supply today, this thing, these things have always ended badly. There's no, there is no example that I can find in history of uh, government doing, abusing the currency system the way we are abusing the dollar today with these deficits and currency creation and debt uh, like the world has never seen. Uh, this probably is not going to end well. But regardless, you're going to do which, which either, either scenario. Gold and silver, precious metals, should do better than any other asset class out there during events like this. Now, I can't guarantee gold and silver's performance, but what I have done is I am 100% invested in gold and silver, and uh, it's the bulk of my net worth. I have no other investment. So I'm betting on it. Right. So there's only so many things an individual can do anyway, but protecting their financial wealth is one, one of them. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. In either scenario, you should make massive gains in purchasing power. Either scenario, one is going to be uh, absolutely spec breathtakingly spectacular, and the other one is just going to be stunning. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, and uh, thank you for joining us.